السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All praises are Allah's Lord of the world <coughs> and may his peace and blessings be upon our master the holy prophet Muhammad and his pure immaculate Ahlul Bayt Inshallah I'll be today and tomorrow which are the final days um, I'll be covering the theme of apparitions in a bit more detail now. Visions, apparitions, tamathulat. And I'll try to go through five or six stories of the Holy Quran, which all are backed by apparitions. And without, the, without knowledge of the concept of apparitions, your understanding of those stories will not only be deficient, but it can even at times compromise the status of the Prophet. And that will be more evident as we go through in general. So just to give a quick summary of what apparitions are, on detaching from the worldly life, one ascends, an automatic response to detaching from the worldly life. And that's why during our sleep, we ascend to metaphysical realms. On death also, we ascend to Barzakh, which is a metaphysical realm, and then to heaven, which according to the Ora Fo is metaphysical. However, some people can acquire that detachment from other than sleep and death. They're, they're awake. They're living with the people. They associate with life in general whilst awake. But at the same time, they can detach themselves from the worldly life. And whilst awake, they transcend Barzakh to Barzakh, the realm of the intellect to supra-angelic realms. Heaven is right now, they're experiencing heaven. They can see hell. They can reside in timeless zones. Sometimes your understanding of resurrection is an academic thing. You prove it through a few philosophical points, and, but sometimes you see it. You see these truths. People keep on arguing about what heaven is, what hell is, how it is. Sometimes people are residing in it right now in this world. Dreaming is part of prophethood, is a component of prophethood. That component of prophethood that dreaming shares is this ascending. But with dreams, it's an automatic response to just your sleep, which you detach from the world in life. But Islam has also provided a protocol even for our sleep. And that's why it suggests and advises us to do the wudu and do a number of actions before actually sleeping. So that ascending, one benefits from it maximally. So, one ascends to supra-angelic realms and there unveils divine abstract data. And that we've mentioned already, that's called kashf. That divine immaterial abstract data is converted to a set of images. Barzakhi images now. The purer the soul, the purer it detached itself whilst awake, the more accurate that conversion will be. With the ma'sumin, it's always 100% accurate because the heart is infallible. Sometimes, it, after converting into those barzakhi images, it's 
informing the ma'asum of something which was going to happen in the future. Sometimes it's a direct instruction. Sometimes it's a test. Sometimes it's something that they have to share with the people. And sometimes it's revelation, the whole Qur'an, which was a product of the ascension of the Holy Prophet. Now, t- tonight I'm going to go through three stories, inshallah. One in relation to Lady Maryam, alayhi salam, and two in relation to Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, where he saw the four guests on the tablecloth and the four birds. What were these stories all about? Okay. فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِنْ دُونِهِمْ هِجَابًا so she secluded herself from them, from the people. Lady Maryam secluded herself. It doesn't have to be a physical seclusion. You can be with the people and seclude yourself at the same time. As a result of that, ruhana. We sent our spirit to her. It was an outcome of that seclusion, that detachment from the worldly life which she had whilst awake. Well, it's, it's really this room, yes. is, what kind of room is yeah. that? Jibra'il. Yes. It is Ruhul Amin, yes. it is Ruhul Yes, it's Jibra'il. Jibra'il, yes. where he sent Jibra'il into Maria? No, let me, uh, let, no. Give, give me a few minutes. I, I, I haven't said anything yet. If you, I, I've only translated the Quran. <laughs> Just let me finish the story. Fa'al salna. So we sent to her our spirit, our spirit being Jibra'il. Fatamathala laha basharan sawiya. The spirit that we sent to Lady Maryam appeared tamathala appeared as in apparition appeared. Apparitions, the Arabic is tamathul. Appeared before Lady Maryam as a well-proportioned human being, perfect human being. The perfect human being, well-proportioned in all aspects, is Jibra'il. But the Barzakhi image, the Barzakhi existence of an angel, not the immaterial existence. We've spoken about this, the two forms of existences. Lady Maryam ascended, unveiled data. When he, she converted that data, her soul converted the data to Barzakhi images, the product, the Barzakhi image was Jibra'il. How did Jibra'il appear as a well-proportioned human being? We too, we ascend in our dreams. We unveil data, abstract data. We convert, we also have a set of Barzakhi images in our dreams. That's our dreams, it's the realm of Barzakh. And this is extrapolated from the Holy Quran. Death and dreams, they share the same mechanism. We, we can dream of our father, mother, friends, and so on and so forth. We can dream of the angel, it's possible. We can dream of the prophets after converting that abstract data with a pure soul. Maryam alayhi salam ascended, unveiled that data, and her, she herself converted into Barzakh images, a faculty of her soul. Converted to Barzakh images, it was Jibra'il in the form of a man. Allah sent Jibra'il. In the same way that our dreams is in unity with us, the person beside us when we are asleep and dream, the person beside us doesn't see what we're dreaming. If we were with Lady Maryam salam, we wouldn't have seen Jibra'il. Because Jibra'il is a product of the soul of Maryam, is in unity with the soul of Maryam. The soul is doing this converting. It's all happening in the soul. It's a product of the soul this Barzakhi existence of Jibra'il. 
and so. She sees it. Now, فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَلًا سَوِيَا This lam in laha, this preposition, in Arabic there are 20 kinds of lam. In Shiism, we believe that our aqa'id defines our grammar, not the other way around, like other schools of thought. We don't get drowned in the literal Qur'an and then say, well, that's this preposition or this, that's that. Or oh, Allah has a hand because, you know, this is very clear from the verse of the Qur'an. Their grammar determines their aqa'id. That's not, that's not the case with us. Our aqa'id determine our grammar. The law here, laha, according to Ayatollah Hassan Zad Omali, is the law of unity. Jibroid is in unity with the soul of Maryam. Do we have this law elsewhere in the Quran? Yes. Lillahi, Lillahi. Whatever is in the heavens and earth is in unity with Allah. Nothing is separate from Allah. Man has nothing except that which he strives for. Man is his actions. These are very delicate points. And other prepositions too. Siru fil And then the verse says, Fanduru Kaifa. Yes. Yes, Kaifa what? Yes. Kana Aribatun. It has Mukadlebin in it too, yes. Kaifa Kana Aribatun Mukadlebin, something like that, yes. But it says, travel fil in the land. Now, if you just take that, the prima facie meaning, well, we have many tourists who may go and travel in the land. What does the fee mean? See, these are all important points. With very important esoteric dimensions to it. But if you just take the external side, you're limiting yourself. Anyway. Lady Maryam ascended. The data, that she, the immaterial divine data, was converted into barzakhi images in unity with her. She was awake, though. But she saw Jibreel not with the physical eye, with the same eye that we see in our dreams, but she was awake. And Jibreel gave her glad tidings of a son. This is something which is going to happen in the future. News of the future was given to Lady Maria. Because when she ascended, she ascended to timeless zones. There is no time there. So when, it's con that, when that data, that immaterial timeless data is converted to pictures, you, you get information of the future. It's possible. قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك. Verily, I seek protection from the All Merciful Allah from what you, what you're doing from you. In kunta taqiya, should you be God weary? She thought this was a physical man at first. In the same way that in our dreams we usually think it's a real thing, and then only when we wake up we say, "Oh, that was a dream." Now there's no waking up here. She was awake when she's having these visions. So she was scared. Uh, wait a minute, this man is approaching me. Lady Maryam salam, was untouched, pure to the very end. And then she suddenly sees a man approaching her. So naturally this made her fear this. She sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, after saying that, Qala, Jibra'il said, Inna ma ana rasul rabbiki. Apparently, I'm only a messenger from your Lord. Being Rasul meaning the angel. It's used many times as an angel in the Quran. I'm only a messenger from your Lord. And I've come to grant you a pure son. Right, right, yes. The Barza. Yes. State of Barza. Yes. That Maryam was. Yes. Maryam was not dead. No, she wasn't. You don't have to be dead. 
But Barzakh is after death. It's after death. It can be also in our dreams, and it can also be, because you came a bit late. I did explain this. Death, dreams, and if whilst awake, you detach yourself from the worldly life. Because in death and sleep, detachment from the worldly life is automatic. Yes. But it's very difficult. It needs a lot of spirituality to detach from the worldly life whilst awake. But in death and sleep, it's an automatic response. Okay. Now. After this apparition, that which all the scholars accept, and actually this story is, has come in the Holy Bible, and the story is the same, up to here. That which all the scholars accept is that she became pregnant after this apparition. That everyone accepts. How she became pregnant, that it's, we don't have that in the Quran, and it hasn't been mentioned in the traditions. Some scholars have given some opinions, and it's usually the Orafa who have the audacity to enter such debates. Otherwise, the theologians, if there's no mention of it, they don't really enter such debates. There's one in particular which I want to share with you. Now, this, I'm not saying this is true, I'm not saying it's 100% fact, and I don't take it as fact. A scholar has said this, and I'm going to share it with you. But the reason I'm going to share this perspective with you, because there's a tradition which supports this perspective of this scholar. And I'll give you the tradition too. Okay, so, after that event, that apparition, she became pregnant. Now, we said she was untouched. No man ever touched her. So, there was no pregnancy resulting from any intimate contact whatsoever. No. There's something in medicine that they call psychosomatic reactions where, as a result of the psyche, one's psyche, and the goings-on in one's psyche, it has the power to enforce an effect of some sort on one's somatic physical body. We have that in dreams. It's been reported in medicine. They're dreaming something, and when waking up, what they dreamt in the realm of Barzakh it had that effect on their body. Here, that psychosomatic reaction may have occurred in this case, because we said Jibra'il was a product of the soul in unity with the soul of Maryam. It was her barzakh when she converted that data into barzakh images. That's one thing. The somatic reaction being the production of sperm in her holy body. That's possible as a psychosomatic reaction. Then the question is okay. Okay, not that much. The, that aura, that particular aura goes up to here. Only that much, he says. The rest I'm just adding with a bit of medical background with your permission. Because this wasn't a case of human cloning. Can anyone say why? Yes. Why, why wasn't the case of the, the birth of Isa a.s. a case of human cloning? Who would you call it from? Maryam a.s. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Pardon? Yes, yes. It would have been a woman. Yeah. A, a female, yes. Well done. Here, now this is, this, is my, this is not even the Arif's comment now. This is, I'm just going to share. See, we believe that miracles, and this is Allah Metabotabo's definition of miracles, that all miracles are scientific. It's 
no miracle goes against the rules of science. But whereas a given event goes from A to B to C to D to Z, with miracles, all those are undergone, all those steps, but instantaneously, not over time. That's a miracle. There's nothing unscientific about it. It's only a question of that instantan inst instantaneousness. Now, here, let's say this RF's perspective, where sperm was produced in the body, how can that still lead to the production of Esau? Now, either you say, I mean, how is the sperm produced, rather? How do you want to relate the production of that sperm? How? There has to be some process, a scientific process, that led that psychosomatic reaction to the production of sperm. Here, every human being, man and woman, has something that they call stem cells. And one source of stem cells is the bone, and there are other sources too. Stem cells, when they are totipotent, in the first 24 to 48 hours, they have the potential to be converted to any cell of the body. But when they're pluripotent, no, they'll be converted into a specific cell, any, depending on the programming of that particular cell. Otherwise, in the early stages, the first 24 hours, it can be converted into any cell, including sperm, male sperm. It has that potential. And if those stem cells, as a result of that psychosomatic reaction, converted that to the stem cell into sperm, then that can fuse with the egg of Lady Maria. That's a legitimate process. And actually, the traditions speak of the birth being only nine hours. We have traditions on that. Now, I'm not saying they're very authentic, but there are traditions that say the birth only took nine hours. Now, so that's only one possibility. But that RF said it's a psychosomatic reaction. That was just some medical thing just to buttress that position. But this tradition I want to read does give support to this perspective that a barzakhi reality can be converted into something physical. And this is one of those very important traditions, not only because of this one point I want to mention, it has a lot of other key codes for you to understand other realities. And we'll go just through it now. Kona Rasul, this is Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, has said this. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Kona Rasulullah yakthuru taqbila Fatima. The Holy Messenger used to kiss Her Eminence Lady Fatima a lot. Fa'ankara dhalika Ayesha. Ayesha wouldn't like this, seeing this scene. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Messenger of Allah said, يَا آيَشَ O آيَشَ إِنِّي لَمَّا أُسْرِيَ بِي إِلَى السَّمَا دَخَلْتُ الْجَنَّةِ If you just really pay attention to this verse and the way I want to explain it, a lot of truth should become evident to you. And now after a number of sessions we've had together, you should be understanding these concepts now. O oh, Ayesha, when they ascended me to the heavens, I entered heaven, Jannah. When, they, when I ascended to the skies, if you like, I entered heaven. Now, this is in relation to the Mi'raj. The physical body was here. At the same time his physical body was here, he was in heaven. See? But, uh, but uh, there are a hadith that the Prophet Muhammad 
went with the physical body to heaven. Yes. Nothing. No, 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 no. There's no tradition. There's no hadith. There are. There are. No, 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 no. No, no, no. There's no tradition. With the physical body. Yes, yes. That the people who, are, who were sitting in the mosque. Yes. They did not see the prophet. Yes. For a while, for yes. a while on the member. Yes. And then, after a while, that he went and he made his journey. He came back and then he told. Yes. He told the people. Yes. Uh, um, that I've never heard of that tradition. But there are many traditions speaking about the Mi'raj, where the Prophet was always sitting on the Sajjade. And everyone saw him. And when he came back, he explained, especially the main. Everyone also, everyone saw him. Yes, everyone, yes, everyone saw him here. No, no, no. But the majority of the traditions, let me, let me just explain. No tradition, even the ones that you're mentioning, doesn't say the physical body goes. It says jismani. Jismani means a bodily mi'raj. It never says turabi. Yes. Jismani is... No, no, it means body. In our dreams, you see many bodies in your dreams, but there's no physical matter. Okay. Now, since this is a very important tradition, if I just can go through it uninterrupted, because then you may lose the plot, because there's a lot of important things here. So when the, I was ascended, I entered heaven. Now, the prophet, in many traditions, he was sitting on the prayer mat. The whole Mi'raj experience was, it took the, the time it would take the door just to open and close. Because, you know, in Mi'raj, it was timeless. The, the, the whole thing that he saw was in a timeless realm. There was no time to it. But the Mi'raj, when he came in and gave the experiences, there were volumes and volumes of things he would explain to the people. But the actual incident was timeless. So he was there, and he was awake, and he was in Jannah at the same time. So, you see, when we speak of Nabi Isa salam, being in the fourth heaven right now, doesn't go against the idea that he exists in the flesh right now. Dakhaltul Jannah, I entered heaven. Fa'adnani Jabra'ilo min shajarate tuba. Jibra'il took me near the tuba tree. See, these are all barzakhi realities now. The Holy Prophet ascended, it was a mi'raj, unveiled that abstract immaterial data, converted it into pictures. The picture is now this, heaven. Heaven is a product of our actions. We've gone through that. Heaven is an apparition. What's the fuel of heaven? Our actions. He's now converting that data. In that data, he sees Jebrail. Jebrail takes him near a tree. All this is in unity with the soul of the Prophet. It's not outside the Holy Prophet. That's all. Heaven and hell are products of the soul. There's no physical reality waiting for us. So in the realm of Barzakh, in the Barzakhi heaven, Jibra'il takes the Holy Prophet to the Tuba tree. وَنَّوَلَنِي مِنْ ثَمَارِهَا and he fed me of its fruit, the fruit of the tree, فَأَكَلْتُهُ And I ate from the fruit. I ate the fruit. That fruit was a barzakhi reality, like we eat in our dreams. We've all eaten in our dreams. In this realm which the Holy Prophet was at, he also ate. Eating, actually, in those metaphysical realms is much more perfect than eating in this realm. The way the traditions speak of eating, uh, it can't be a physical eating, because it says you never get satiated. You can just eat and eat. Because the laws governing heaven, it differs from the laws that govern this physical realm. There's no excretion of waste products, there's no sleep, rules are different there. It's more perfect than in this world. This world is limited. That's another world. That's another realm. It's a yom al-akhar. Something else. 
he ate from the tree. Now this is the important part. فَحَوَّلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ مَا أَنْ فِي دَهْرِ Then Allah converted that fruit, the barzakhi fruit that he ate in heaven, converted it to water in my back. Water in my back meaning sperm. Converted a barzakhi reality into a physical reality. You see? It's a very important tradition, this. Now look at that. So that, that's in relation to the story of Maryam. It was that, that part I wanted to mention. But let me just finish the tradition. When I came down to earth, it's using, it's using the word hubut. When I came down to earth, well, he was on earth already. What does coming down to earth mean? Here the story of Adam alayhi salam acquires meaning now. That inshallah we'll speak about later. وَقَعْتُ I became intimate with Lady Khadija فَهُمِلَتْ بِفَاطِمَةً And Lady Fatima was conceived. So, Allah, Salli Allah, Okay. The second story, now the next two stories will be in relation to the um, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam which also, without an understanding of apparitions, this you won't fully understand the exact story. This is from Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh also. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى Verily our messengers came to Ibrahim with good news. قَالُوا سَلَامَ The messengers said, Salam. قَالَ سَلَام He replied, Salam. فَمَا لَبِثَ أَنْ جَاءَ بِإِجْلٍ هِي نَحْذٍ Didn't take long. He نَحْذٍ Hanithin? Hanithin, yes. Are you sure? Yes. Shall I check it or you're sure? Oh, you're sure, right. Okay, okay. It's chapter 11, verse 69. There is no meaning for Yes, it means at that time, before long. Yes, right. No, if you're sure, I won't, yes. Um, it didn't take long before a roasted calf was brought to the guests. Falamma ra'a aydiyahum la tasilu ilai nakirahum. When he saw that their hands aren't making contact with the food, he took them amiss. This was, he was a bit uncomfortable with seeing that sight. And he, he feared a bit. Because at that time, when you would present food on the tablecloth to guests, if they wouldn't take from the food, it was a sign of enmity. So Prophet Ibrahim thought this, he feared the situation a bit here. Remember Lady Maryam, she was a bit scared too. But that was for another reason. Here, Ibrahim was a bit scared. Then the messengers introduced themselves. Don't be scared, the messengers said. We've been sent to the tribe of Lut. We've been sent, as in, we are messengers, we are Rasul. Those four, there were four young men who appeared before Ibrahim. And in our traditions, those four were Jibra'il, Israfil, Mikail, and one other. Not Israel, there was another one. They've been mentioned by name. The four young men, human beings, were angels. So Ibrahim, being a prophet, a messenger, would ascend, abstract, would unveil that abstract divine data whilst awake and then when that data was converted by Ibrahim, by the soul of Ibrahim, 
it came in the fo form of four angels in the shape of men as guests. Now it says, when he saw that their hands aren't touching the food, he took them amiss. Because their hands were barzakhi. He saw barzakhi realities. They couldn't touch physical food. And that's in this story, the Bible has this story too. But the Bible refers to them as actually eating the food. This is one of the differences here. Whereas in the Quran, they, they made no contact. They were guests, but they made no contact with the food. They couldn't make contact. A barzakhi reality is not physical. Can't touch physical food. Can't consume physical food. Here, they came with two news, two pieces of news. One was that your wife Sare, Lady Sare, alayhi wasalam, is going to bear a child by the name of Ishaq, Isaac. And then Isaac, from Isaac, he will produce an offspring by the name of Ya'qub, Jacob. And this happened to be, when you travel to timeless zones, on that conversion of data, you can tell of the future. Lady Sara was there, though. Uh, the second piece of news was, we're going to the tribe of Lut, and we're going to punish them. And I'll speak about what happened to the tribe of Lut, inshallah, tomorrow. Here, Sara, alayhi salam, saw the four angels as four men. Now, we said that apparitions, those visions, those tamathulat, barzakhi images, are in unity with the soul of the perceiver, Ibrahim alayhi salam. How come Sare alayhi salam actually saw that too? Two answers have been provided here. One is that as a result of increased spirituality, people are able to have access to the apparitions of other people. When the Holy Prophet would receive revelation, no one else would see Jibra'il, but Amir al-Mu'minin was able to see him because of his enhanced spirituality. Or a second possibility is that with Ibrahim's wilayat al-Takwini, his providential authority over the causes of the cosmos, um, he allowed Sare to see those four. It's like Imam Sajjad Ali Salam when he opened his fingers for the other person to see uh, some barzakhi realities of others. That's also a possibility. You know? Which one it is, I don't know. It may be another, there may be a third answer. But these are just some possible you know, Now, in the Bible, this story has come, although I did write it to share with you, but for purpose of time, I won't go through it, but it's an interesting read. But it does say that the four did actually consume the food physically. And this is one of the differences that the Quran has. In any but case... The Bible is not the word of Allah. Yes. The Bible was written after the prophet. Yes, or yes. 90 years or so. After, yeah, uh, yes, yeah. yes, no, yes I'm, I'm saying the story is different to the Quran. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I mean, some people say, for them, the Holy Prophet got the stories from the Bible. No, I mean, about, Holy Prophet, about Quran, yes, that in the world of time, yes, 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 and you are talking about the uh, Bible that is not, the it's not, but, but it's Allah. interesting. There are many differences in Bible. Yes, there are differences, yes, yes, that's it. Okay, so this was the second story. And here it was about the ascension of Ibrahim and that data which was converted, two pieces of news came, one in relation to the future and one in relation to what will happen to the tribe of Lut. But the key point being, فَلَمَّا رَعَ la tasilu ilay. That when he 
saw that their hands aren't actually making contact with the food. The food stayed as it was. Here Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh was saying they couldn't make contact with the food because that's a barzakhi reality. There's no matter, physical matter in barzakh. And finally, the story of Prophet Ibrahim and the four birds. Now, until a few months ago, I would explain this story in another way. And I have been recorded, and it's come, it's on YouTube. I always knew that Imam Khomeini regarded this story as an apparition, as a tamathul of Ibrahim. He mentions it very concisely in one of his books on philosophy. But I, 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 I would ask many ustad that how does Imam regard this story as an apparition? I never received an answer which I could you know, share with people, so I would never discuss it. But recently, alhamdulillah, I found someone who described this apparition and it's, maybe you're the first people who I'm sharing this with. But the source that we've got this from is Imam Khomeini's work. You know, this is not my own thing. I'm not sharing, none, none of the things I've shared with you are my own things. I'm just a conveyor of what great scholars, Imam Khomeini, Allame Tabo Tabai, Ayatollah Hassan Zada Amali, Ayatollah Jawadi Amali, all these last few days, I want to convey this to you because it will benefit you spiritually from what other people have seen, not only have learned. Ibn Arabi, for example, has seen heaven, has seen previous prophets, prophets before Adam, and he's acquired a lot of ma'rifa from them. He's gone through the stages of heaven, or seen hell, He's explained them to us. Whilst awake in this world, and then when you, someone has seen these truths, it's different to someone who has extrapolated them. One is ilm ul yaqeen, one is ayn ul yaqeen. The degree of yaqeen in ayn ul yaqeen is higher. Not to say the person who has acquired truth through ilm ul yaqeen is wrong, that's okay. But there are deeper realities here. Now let's go through the story, chapter 2, 260. وَإِذَ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي أَرَنِي كَيْفَ تُحِيَ الْمَوْتَى Recall when Ibrahim said, O oh Lord, show me how you revive the dead. قَالَ Allah said, أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ don't you believe? Don't you have belief? Qala bala, yes. Walakin liyat ma'inna qalbi for the tranquility of my heart. Now, the first question is, didn't he have tranquility of the heart? You see? If this was something which happened in the physical world, externally, didn't he have tranquility of the heart? It doesn't make sense. It's very difficult to absorb that. He was a prophet. He was a rasul. He was an imam. What does it mean for a prophet not to have tranquility of the heart? That's not possible. You see? Qala. Fakhud arba'atam min Take four birds. Fasurhunna ilayk. Cut them into pieces before you. Thummaj al ala kulli jabal min hunna juz'ah. Then put it, when you've cut them into pieces, a bit of the flesh, put a bit on each of the mountain peaks. Then call upon them. They'll come to you in haste. The dead birds which have been cut into pieces. And the external story is this, that he cut them, he separated the necks of the four birds, then a bit of the flesh put on this mountain peak, that mountain peak, that mountain peak. He called upon them, he put the necks of the birds in his hand, and he would sometimes move the necks, and the respective flesh of that bird would go to that bird, and so on and so forth. 
Although in history, no one's recalled of having seen that happening in the external reality. I'm not saying reject the idea that this happened in the physical world. I'm not, I don't want to push you in that direction. But now pay attention here. If this did occur in the physical world, those birds on regaining life won't be the same as the original birds. We don't believe in reincarnation. The process was this, if it were to happen in external reality, as a miracle. Dead birds cut into pieces, will decompose, will become earth, will become food over a period of time. Birds will consume the food. They, after consumption, it will create reproductive cells within their body, and they will reproduce a bird. If all this was to happen instantaneously, it's possible, and that's a miracle. But it wouldn't be the same bird, though. Because when, on fertilization, on the production of the offspring, there, it's a new soul which is developing. It can't be exactly the same as the previous soul. Otherwise, there would be two souls now. We can't have an actual soul, the previous soul, become passive, become deactivated, and then the same soul to be active again. That's reincarnation. It's tanosoh. It's impossible. And the philosophers, Mono Sadra, have gone into that in some detail. The process is possible, but it won't be the same birds. Here, now this is what Imam was trying to put forward. That this was an apparition, a tamathul of Ibrahim. He ascended, he was a prophet. He had tranquility of the heart. He would ascend, abstract data would be unveiled, converted into data. The data here was a protocol. A protocol of how to acquire tranquility of the heart. He was a prophet. He was an intermediary between the people and Allah. He knows what the needs of the people are. What do the people need? They need tranquility of the heart. He would ascend to get the protocol from Allah to tell the people how to get tranquility of the heart. So he would ascend and Allah told him what the protocol is for people to acquire tranquility of the heart in the story of the four birds. Ibrahim unveiled that knowledge of Allah through those barzakh images and then went to the people and explained how you acquire tranquility of the heart. That's the meaning of prophets being intermediaries. Now, that, that makes much more sense now than saying he didn't have tranquility of the heart, than saying Prophet Dawood made an error in his judgment, than saying Adam made an um, error in his judgment took from the apple, from the tree. These have to be explained. They're ma'asumin. You're compromising the ismat by speaking like that. About Dawood and Adam, alayhim as will speak tomorrow. In the realm, you want to ask a question? In reference to this, yeah. could you elaborate on Prophet Musa saying, Allah, let me see you. Right. Yes, that I won't have time in this yet, but I have spoken about that. Two stories of Musa, that was one of them. It's on YouTube, yes. But it was also apparitions. Both the fire on the top of the mount and the mountain crushing. The mountain is still in place. Nothing physical happened with that mountain. But let's, let's not deviate now. Don't compromise with the status of prophets. And in many books, in your Shia books, scholars of old and present, they say Yusuf forgot about Allah when he asked the person to go and recall him before the king. In relation to Yunus, they say, oh, he made an error. He shouldn't have left. See, these are wrong. 
This is just playing around with the holy status of prophets. These have explanations to it. We may not know. But don't attribute these errors to Masumin. And then they say it was Tarka Ola. You know, they didn't do the best option. Well, if, if you want to say that, that throws Ismat now right away. With every action our Prophet does, we say, well, maybe that was Tarka Ola. It was better to do that. Maybe that was Tarka Ola. You see? It doesn't, the Olafo don't like this concept of Tarka Ola. Because it compromises the status of Ismat. They, don't, they speak on a different realm, with a different language. Prophet Ibrahim was an intermediary, was a prophet. Intermediary between who? The people and Allah. The people have needs. They want to grow. They want to be spiritual. They want to acquire tranquility of the heart. As a prophet, he ascends. That abstract immaterial knowledge that on ascension he unveils becomes converted into barzakh images, a message from God. But this time it's not about the future. It's not about what's going to happen in the future. It's about a protocol to give now to man. They want to acquire tranquility of the heart. This is the protocol. Now the protocol was of four birds. Some traditions, they vary with what the four birds were. Each of these four birds have attributes of vice attributed to them. If you want tranquility of the heart, you have to slaughter these vicious attributes within you that these four birds have, they exist within you too. This has to be eliminated. On eliminating these vicious attributes, you can acquire tranquility of the heart. Ibrahim had it, alayhi salam. The people didn't have it. And that's what he came to give to the people. So the crow, it's known for its overdoing its nutritional appetite. The rooster, overdoing its sexual appetite. The peacock, that self-beauty, love of the self, that ego. And the vulture, since it consumes dead flesh, <coughs> some people say that's symbolic of being drowned in materialism. And other traditions have, I didn't, I didn't have this source with me, but from, there may be other, the duck may be one of them also. But that's the so story of the four birds, is that? And um, that's what maybe is meant when they call it an apparition of Ibrahim. Okay. So inshallah, tomorrow I'll go through the story of Lut and Dawood, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.